Hello everyone, my name is Sue Elson. Welcome to LinkedIn for recruiters, headhunters and executive search professionals. Great to have you with me and also welcome to those people listening to the recording. There's going to be lots of information so please hang on to your hats because I'm going to go through heaps of stuff. I'm also going to be assuming that you can read so I won't be reading out everything on the slides but I do know that for some people it's much more helpful to be able to read the content from the slides. So uh, questions are very much welcome in the chat. I'm going to be going through top 10 techniques, top 10 ways, and also how you can manage your activities in 20 minutes a week on LinkedIn. Now, I realize that a lot of recruiters, headhunters, and executive search professionals are on LinkedIn for hours a day. And I'd just like to mention that most of the tips that I'm going to be talking about today are for you as the individual, not for your candidates. So I'm not going to be talking about the LinkedIn Recruiter product. That's for the sales team at LinkedIn Recruiter. I am independent of LinkedIn. I don't work for them. I'm not paid for them. I don't receive any commercial arrangements arrangements from them. Uh, but if you want to discuss that, uh, more than happy to do that at the end. Please pop in your questions in the chat. Now, just for turning up, thank you for that. Uh, I really encourage you to download the latest offer, which includes a usernames and password spreadsheet, which is what all of my clients have said is the most valuable thing they've ever done. Uh, the LinkedIn stats and backup spreadsheet, a basic social media statistics spreadsheet, a list of the publications that you've done so that you can keep a record of what you do on social media, and also a sample resume layout, which might be suitable for some of your candidates. I also shows you the link there to my services and pricing page. And if you would like to, you can also follow me on social media. So I'm going to pop these links in the chat and I would love to see some more YouTube subscribers. I'm aiming for a thousand of them. So uh, I've got a long way to go. I've only got 147 so far. Every time I run one of these insight webinars, I provide my stats. So if you look at any of the previous ones, you'll see how my stats are growing. And yeah, I'd love to see you online. And I'm now the author of five official books. My latest was launched on the 23rd of January. It's LinkedIn for me and my career or business. Now, there is a bit of a story to this book. It was originally published in 2020 without an index. And then I thought, well, you can't be an author and publish a book without an index. So I have since updated the book fully. I had to actually remove things, I had to edit everything. I've added another 140 pages of content. It is absolutely categorically up to date with all things LinkedIn, includes information on newsletters, audio, live events, um, general events, all the tips and tricks for your LinkedIn page as well as your LinkedIn profile. So feel free to download it. Also, if you go onto Amazon, you will actually see a copy of a review that was written for it recently as well. For those of you who don't know me or haven't met me before, my career started at Westpac in Adelaide. I worked there for 11 years before I moved to Melbourne, got a job, found out I was pregnant, got sacked, and basically haven't had a real job since 1994. I've done lots of different things in that time. I'm a member of the Melbourne Press Club since 2008, the Career Development Association of Australia, I think it was 2015, along with the Australian Society of Authors, Writers Victoria and the Small Press Network. My first website went online in 2001, Newcomers Network. I joined LinkedIn in 2003. So I'm actually member number 77832. And my 120 Ways Publishing website went online to produce uh, the books. So I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where you are and where I am. And this presentation is for everyone. It's not professional advice for your circumstances, but it is hopefully very educational and informative. I have already sent you the link to the slides, which you can follow along to, and the recording will be going live on YouTube uh, later this afternoon. You can leave your camera off unless you want to ask a question and, and your microphone off as well so that it's nice and clear. And I'm assuming there's a varied level of knowledge and experience. I am going to be asking you a question to answer and pop in the chat shortly, but you can also ask me any other questions. You can either send them to me directly or make them available and visible to everyone. 
I don't mind either way. But if you make them just sent to me, then I won't announce your name when I ask them. And believe it or not, running this webinar, it's free to you. It's pro bono, professional work, but it takes me about 10 hours to produce this. So I would love it if you could buy my book, follow me on social media, provide a LinkedIn endorsement. So you just tick, you know, LinkedIn uh, recommendation or even a Google review. I really appreciate it uh, as your way of saying thank you for this event. So it's for everyone and suggestions and recommendations that I am providing are based on my experience on the platform and off the platform. It's ethical. It's all focused on networking, attraction and relationship building techniques. Um, it's the best strategies for you, your candidates and clients. And if you need some support, it is available. It's also uh, I want to know if you're in a recruitment specific setting, an enterprise, whether you're consulting privately or just interested because it's a webinar. So in the chat, could you please give yourself two letters? So if you're in a recruitment agency, it would be A. And if you're in Australia, it would be another A. So two A's. Uh, if you're in an organisation heading up recruitment and selection, it would be E. And if you're based overseas, it would be an O. So I'd love to see from some of the people in the chat, this just helps me understand a little bit more about you. And I can hopefully tailor the presentation to your needs and obviously uh, come through and just, you know, gives me some clues. So we've got a number of recruiters, also organisations and also consultants. Wow, that's a really interesting mix. And we've got some overseas and some in Australia. Uh, executive search focus in mining and resources. Okay, nice little smiley face there from Gabriel. Merci beaucoup. Um, Oh, excellent. Okay, so we've got lots of different ones there. All right, so hopefully Aussie, hey <laughs> for Aussie, uh, and Canada. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, I have no idea what time it is in Canada at the moment, but uh, you must be very committed. And China, fantastic. Uh, that's wonderful. All right, so let's move on. Uh, it's going to be fairly quick and because there's a lot to get through. So there are additional resources. Uh, thank you, Catherine, counsellor and career development in private practice. So not a recruiter, but boy, isn't it nice to know what recruiters are doing and how they operate so that we can better advise our career clients. I'm you know, very passionate about that. And I have spent time in recruiting, both at Westpac, um, I did entry level recruitment and graduate program recruitment at Westpac. And I've also done consulting search results for uh, individual businesses, you know, as recently as this year uh, for, for private practice as well. So, yeah, done lots of bits and bobs. So, these slides are available. You can click on these links. You can check out my blog, publications, presentations, podcasts, if that's your thing, or videos. And uh, obviously, the slides are at that link there. So, oh, we've got some recruitment and HR background. Yes, I was part of the Australian Human Resources Institute for many, many years. So definitely understand HR perspective as well. So um, specific tips. This presentation is definitely designed to help you update your own LinkedIn profile because even though you're on LinkedIn every day, I have found a lot of people in the recruitment area have terrible LinkedIn profiles themselves, which is a bit of a worry because if you want to find the best candidates, you need them to fill in their LinkedIn profile the best. So what better way to demonstrate how to do that than to update your own LinkedIn profile? So as I said before, my latest LinkedIn book helps you go step by step through that. And if you would like to purchase multiple copies and give them to your clients uh, or make them pay for them and make a profit yourself, uh, please let me know because it really is a step-by-step -step guide. I am going to encourage you to connect with everyone you meet professionally or personally in the future. Now, I know that for an HR manager, you do not want to connect with every applicant, but particularly if your role is only to try and find people to work for that organisation. But you might have some exclusions, so I don't have an issue with that. But as a general rule, if you have clients and you're at the agency level, you definitely need to be connected to all of your clients and their executive assistants and the people who do the onboarding and anybody else who's part of the, the recruitment team. So please, you know, think about it from now on. Every time you have some correspondence, a new email, a new request for information, invite that person to connect with you on LinkedIn. Now, if you are a member 
of the Recruitment and Consulting Services Association, there is a code of conduct and you will need to abide by that. So if you're a professional member of any other body, make sure you do abide by those rules. Don't contravene them as a result of my suggestions. And also, I would like to encourage you, like when I was in recruitment and I was first moved to Melbourne, I didn't know all the suburbs in Melbourne. So I had a map of Melbourne on my desk so that I could see the length of time it would take someone to commute from where they lived to where this job offer was. Now, I know work from home is a big thing. The ABS has predicted that it's going to be at least 15% of the population is going to be working from home in the future. So with that in mind, the next best option is to work close to home. And if you can get your candidates to be living close to that location, then they're much more likely to want to turn up to the workplace. So please consider that in your recruitment selection process, because I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a really great way to feel connected because a lot of people are definitely feeling isolated after the pandemic. Remember that LinkedIn is a database. It's always a network. It's great to say thank you. If you don't tell, you can't sell. So unlike a resume that is designed to be suitable for a job in an organization in a particular area, your LinkedIn profile is designed to attract opportunities. So you can fill in more details and keywords are gold. The prospective clients and candidates will Google you before an interview. Uh, so keep that in mind, they're gonna check you out. And also I'd like you to consider connecting to other recruiters and executive search professionals and uh, headhunters that are in other countries because you never know, somebody in Singapore might be looking for someone in Sydney and if you are based in Sydney, then you can perhaps be working in conjunction with the Singapore-based headhunter. So please consider connecting with those other colleagues and people elsewhere. So sometimes you might not have candidates available, but someone you know might and vice versa. So it's a good idea to connect with like-minded individuals. And also discuss your expertise in words that other people can understand. So I did some work for the automotive industry and one of the people there was a grip test engineer. Now, as a recruiter, if you were helping that person move into a new role, a lot of people have no idea what a grip test engineer is. In fact, in all the times I've asked that question, I think only one person knew, and they were from the automotive industry. But it's actually the person who makes sure that a car doesn't roll over. So it's kind of an important job if you're designing and building cars. So make sure you under, you explain what you do, even in your recruitment role. Do you do temporary staff? Do you do permanent staff? Do you do contract? Uh, you know, what sort of clients do you assist? What candidates do you assist? What industries do you work in? And from the candidate perspective, I usually recommend that they only deal with recruiters who've been in the job for three years or more because those recruiters to be successful really need to specialise in particular industries and build their network so they've got that nice little gene pool of candidates and clients that they can service. So if you've been in it for three years or more and you haven't updated your LinkedIn profile, uh, definitely time to consider doing that. Okay, so a couple of quick stories before I get into the meat and potatoes. I use free job ads on LinkedIn and then what I do for my clients is I look for where the best quality candidates would be for my clients. And then I reach out to them, I message them, I invite them to connect, and I send them the link to the free job ad. And I have found excellent quality candidates like that. I have also tried the paid ad options, and I have only attracted mostly people who are not eligible to apply for the role, because here in Australia, you need to be an Australian citizen and have work rights and all these sorts of extra things. So that has worked really, really well for me. I also know what it's like to be on the other end and applying for jobs and getting no response. So whenever I work on behalf of a client recruiting for them, I acknowledge receipt of every application, even if they were not suitable. And I let them know when there's going to be a decision. And then once the decision has been made, I also let them know that a decision has been made. They say, can you please give me advice? I say, look, we have a policy of not providing any advice or input, but we wish you all the best in the future. And in those messages, I also invite the applicants to connect on LinkedIn 
And I also invite them to follow the organisation on social media because if they've had a good experience with the organisation, they may still recommend it for business purposes in the future. So we want to look after candidates nicely. I also believe that if you can't find applicants, it's often because they haven't got uh, the keywords in their LinkedIn profiles. And I live next door to a full-time recruiter at a senior level, and he found somebody by contacting this person and ringing that one and contacting somebody else, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and finally uh, found someone who did have a LinkedIn profile but had no details of their expertise on their LinkedIn profile. So as a recruiter, if your candidates don't fill in their LinkedIn profiles, it makes it much easier to find them, much harder to find them. And also you need to obviously develop your own recruitment skills. Now, I have been very frustrated by stories I've heard about a part-time uh, receptionist position where they gathered 14 candidates for, for a group interview. Now that is ridiculous. You should never, in my view, uh, speak to more than six people per job and you should never interview more than three people because that's what I was taught way back in the day with targeted selection interview techniques. So I wrote this article on should you pay job candidates for interviews? So feel free to check that one out. I've actually been contacted by people at Google who have now decided to implement some of those suggestions at Google. So that's pretty cool. That was an article I wrote on LinkedIn. I also spoke on 3AW Radio here in Melbourne on police recruitment strategies because the Victorian police needs to hire more police. So perhaps consider that if you've got a candidate who's not sure about what they can do. And also I was interviewed for a course for a university on sourcing diverse candidates. So feel free to check that link out as well. So why even bother with LinkedIn? Well, you're going to be Googled and 75% of people will be Googled before an interview and 95% before a job offer. I also recommend you have your own name website. If you don't want to pay for something, you can just create one at business.google.com and there's the instructions on how to do that. There's 881 million members worldwide and over 17 million in Australia. What's really interesting is 59% of them in Australia uh, age between 25 and 34. And I thought they were all old like me, but um, they're not. So that's exciting. And also no job or enterprises forever. We need a network uh, in the unfortunate event that we lose our job. We need to be able to tap into that network and get something else. So please, as I said, remember to ask any questions in the chat because I'm happy to stop and, and get through those as we go through. So these are my top 10 techniques. And I will love you to know, you know, tick off. How many of these are you actually doing? So obviously, complete your LinkedIn profile in detail. You can download a copy of your data, which is a good thing to do at least every three or six months in the unlikely event that LinkedIn blows up and you lose all your connections. Um, make sure that you have a fantastic headline. This is the spot where the keywords really need to be. I have a formula that I recommend, so feel free to check that out. And I also have suggestions on how you can describe your achievements. And also there's a little cheat sheet. Now the headline, if somebody is at the beginning of their career and they still want to be found for the job title they'd like, they can put the word future or aspiring before it, the current job title. Um, and also if they do not have a job at present, I recommend that they put in a job called career research from the date their last job ended until now, because the algorithm appears to favor people who have a current role. So that's a, a quick tip for the, the career practitioners who are here today. Now, you should all have your own URL. If you don't know how to do that, just click on that link and change it to your own name. If that's not available, pop a dash between your first and last name uh, or a number on the end or your post nominals. I've got a Bachelor of Business, B B U S. I could add, but you want to personalise that. That optimises your name in Google search results and it also means that um, it looks a lot nicer on your email signature, on your website, wherever else you publish it. Now, your headline. I've got a formula, as I said before, and I know you should label jars, not people, but if you meet me at a networking event and I tell you all the things I do, 
you, you know, we could be there for half an hour. So when I was through everything, I wasn't getting any gigs. When I said I'm an independent LinkedIn specialist, people remembered me. So I've just made up a fictitious one here, a balanced banking and finance recruiter. That's my sick humour there, saying I'm a balanced banking. And the reason I've put that adjective there, it's it's a word that you wouldn't, well, we know you've got to balance your bank account. <laughs> so, yeah, it's memorable. It's not in regular use. It sounds a lot better than senior or experienced or some other dry, boring term. And hopefully it makes me memorable. But these first few words in my headline are what people see when I appear in the newsfeed. So I want people to remember all the time that's what I do. After my headline, uh, my label, I put in keywords so you can mention all the types of recruiting you do and then something about you personally. So when clients or candidates reach out to you, oh, you love to ski. Yes, I went to Mount Hossum, you know, last season, whatever, um, gives you something to talk about. Thank you, Michael, for that comment, for being so generous with my knowledge. Yes, Michael. Uh, I can probably talk underwater with a mouthful of marbles uh, sharing that. Um, so, yeah. And also your photo, uh, smiling, looking at the camera with your teeth showing, wearing a high neck garment so it frames your face and your eyes on the one third line. Jules asks, can the headline begin with qualifications? It could if they were really, really important to that industry. But I believe that what most people are looking for is someone who can add value immediately to the organisation. So I would probably put that a little bit further along. And if those, like if it's a PMP because they're a project manager, I mean, a lot of people will put that in because it's important. But if it's, you know, not what you want people to remember you by, because in the newsfeed, we only see the first few characters of the headline, not the whole lot. So yeah, focus on what is most important for people to know uh, about you. All right, now on your mobile phone, you can add a video behind your face, you can add an audio pronunciation of your name, and you can add a special link in this section here, which stands out and should be the main link that you want people who visit your profile to visit. So feel free to do that. You can also, in the providing services section, so even if you've got a full-time role in recruitment agency, headhunter, executive search, you can still list providing services because some people won't necessarily think to go to an agency, they might want a consultant. Now, the best thing about in the providing services section is you can also add some photos. So if you're a creative and you're part-time, then that's another good spot to put that as well. Now, everyone you can meet from now on, connect. Everyone you message, everyone who visits your LinkedIn profile, so that's why I have LinkedIn Premium, so I can see the last 90 days of people who've looked at me and I can tell whether or not my profile is working for me. Anybody who's on the people also viewed list, anybody you know from the past, people in your industry. I went to a networking event with a local council last night and so I took my phone around and used the scan code, which I'll show you shortly. And the other thing that I'd like to encourage you to do is if you're trying to find people, so let's say you are a recruiter that specialises in banking, you might want to look for all the decision makers in the banks in your area. So if you can't find them through LinkedIn, you can do something called a Google Advanced Search. So I will very quickly show you this. Let me just type in Google Advanced Search. So you can then search the entire LinkedIn database and never run out of uh, queries. So let's say we said bank uh, and I don't know, um, recruiter and um, Sydney and let's put in HR as well just for fun. I always put the, the words in there and you choose the website linkedin.com and there's some jobs that have come up and then we've got Amelia who's the HR coordinator at the Deutsche Bank etc etc etc. So you can keep going through this list and then you can right click open all of these in a new tab 
And then you can look at Michelle and say, right, is she somebody I'd like to connect with? And it's a really quick way to expand your network and find very, very specific things. And obviously, you could also do this to find candidates. Um, so Christine's asked, if you meet candidates and you have concerns with their skills and authenticity, do you still connect? Okay. Um, you need to sort of determine whether this is going to be a helpful connection to you in the future. So just because they don't have votes for their skills doesn't necessarily mean they don't have those skills. Now, if they're very junior level, yeah, you don't know. Most people know at least 250 people. So if they're in your area and you've got certain criteria that that person meets, then I would pretty much say yes, because you can have 30,000 connections. Now, if you're getting close to that number and you're starting to run out, then you might be a little bit more picky. So as an example, Christine, I do not connect with any technical website, search engine optimization specialists in foreign countries because I'm not planning to outsource that task and I see no direct benefit in connecting with those people. So I ignore their request. Um, now, there's another question about damaging your reputation if somebody can see who you're connected to. Okay, that's a really interesting question. So one of the things that you can do in LinkedIn, so we'll just take a little sidetrack here, um, is you can decide who can see your connections. So I'll just move a couple of things out of my screen here. So under settings and privacy, under visibility, you'll be able to see uh, do, 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 do. one of these is connections. Right. So I have said that people can see who I'm connected to. But if you didn't want to show who you were connected to, you can turn this off. Now, if I'm connected to Roger and you're connected to Roger, you will still see that I'm connected to Roger because you're connected to Roger because it's a shared connection. But if, if it's, you know, Ian and you're not connected to him and I am, you won't see that I'm connected to Ian. So, yeah, that's just a good way to, to check that out. Um, yeah, thanks for that question. All right. As I said, love tailoring the presentation uh, to your needs and answering questions along the way kind of proves my expertise and uh, lets you know that I know what I'm talking about now. Are you a member of a professional association? Now, many people think there's no point me paying for $300 a year to join some professional association because all I get is a magazine and I don't use it anyway. Well, I disagree. I believe we should all be a member of a professional association. It keeps us up to date with what's happening in the industry. Now, there is a website in Australia called myfuture.edu.au and for multiple occupations, they provide further details on salary, uh, expectations of job forecasts, uh, you know, employment prospects. And they also uh, list similar occupations. So unfortunately, they didn't have a specific one for recruitment consultant, but they did mention human resource consultant. And on this page on the left menu there, it also lists the industry websites. So you can then find out. And so that's the link to this page if you want to have a look at it. Um, and then you can showcase that membership on your LinkedIn profile. So don't just assume you pay the money and get no value out of it. There's actually, yes, you can stay up to date. Yes, you can still follow them if you haven't paid. If you're still a student, join as a student because it's a lot cheaper, at least for the first 12 months. Um, so consider that as well. Now, um, how will you engage on LinkedIn? So for a lot of recruiters, it's about getting candidates, putting them in jobs, but not really sharing your expertise. So one of the best ways you can share your expertise is by liking other people's stuff. They do like it when you like their stuff. You could also find something. So if you were a member of that professional association, there was something useful, you could share it. And if it's related to what you do, so much the better or you can create, and that's there's some, some extra tips on that there. But I wanted to really focus on recruiters, so I'll leave that one for you to follow up later. Now, if you are a private consultant and you just do your own thing and you were thinking, should I have a company page or not? I'm here to suggest absolutely you can because it puts the little logo on your LinkedIn profile and I share everything I publish under my own name 
on my LinkedIn company page. And that keeps a full index there for 12 months of everything I've posted. I've also got a little LinkedIn lead generation form there. And if you are part of an organization, the about section has a lot of new features that have been added. And you can also see uh, my past events and the videos I've uploaded. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do on the LinkedIn company page now. So if you're an admin on the company page or you're thinking about creating one, uh, there's some extra tips there for you. Now, also under your own settings. So if you have a LinkedIn premium profile, you can turn yourself anonymous and you can check out everybody's LinkedIn profile without them ever knowing that you looked at them. And I do do this on behalf of my clients. So if I'm looking at profiles for a client, I may make myself anonymous. But the rest of the time I leave myself turned on because if I look at someone, there's a 30% chance they'll then look back at me. So that can actually be a really good cold calling technique or a warm calling technique if you'd like to do that. If you've decided to have a sabbatical, you can temporarily deactivate or hibernate your account. You can also turn off your visibility. You can also turn on creator mode. Uh, there's all sorts of little extra options as well. And one of the things that I do with all of my clients at the beginning of our appointments is I check their statistics because there's no way to know whether your LinkedIn profile has improved if you don't measure it against some data. So the two most important figures are how many profile views are you getting every 90 days and how many times are you appearing in search results in seven days? So you want to have at least 100 views per 90 days and at least 50 appearances in search results in seven days. And if that's not happening at the moment, your LinkedIn profile is not working for you. So the little stats spreadsheet that I mentioned in my latest offer, you can download from my website and it tells you these recommendations and it gives you the spreadsheet so that you can um, update those numbers. How do you do the download of the stats? Well, Michael, you actually have to click each of those links and it will give you the number on each of those. So it's a manual process. Um, but if you do it before you make any changes, and then again in three months, you will see a significant difference if you do uh, those suggestions. Uh, creator mode is all about. Yes, Stacey, I do talk about creator mode in my book. Um, it's available from your uh, main menu. So if we just go back to um, my profile. Um, it's in here in this resources section. And when it's turned on, you will see that you get given five hashtags to talk about. So your content in theory should include those five hashtags. And it gives me access to LinkedIn live video events, audio events, writing a newsletter and some follow tools, which is just a button, which means that people click on it and they can follow me. So if I'm producing content at least once a week, it is worthwhile doing. The only hesitation I have with it is it changes your blue button on your LinkedIn profile to a follow button instead of a connect button. So if you want to connect with me and you haven't already, you have to press the more button, which is a bit of a nuisance. But um, I love the LinkedIn newsletter. And you'll actually see here uh, my newsletter has nearly 5,000 subscribers. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, so definitely I encourage it for the right person um, definitely can consider that thanks Stacey all right let's go back to the slides so how can you use LinkedIn they were the techniques up your engagement ratio there is this really cute laughing one I haven't used that one yet I don't use the curious one because I find it a little bit passive aggressive if you use this supportive one apparently it helps a post to go viral but nevertheless, if you can engage with some people's content, fantastic. If you can click the notification bell, which is a little gray bell on your VIP clients, then you can see what they're doing and engage with their content. And there's also a little link there on finding warm leads on LinkedIn. You can search for people. So if I was looking for a heart surgeon on LinkedIn, um, if I type that in the search box, it will then give me all those filters and then I can also press all filters. So this services one is for those people who filled in that providing services page. So it's a, a really, really handy one. And then you can see all these extra filters over here. So 
LinkedIn is really up in the ante on trying to find people. But again, it all depends on whether the person has filled in their LinkedIn profile. So you might like to compare your LinkedIn profile with another recruiter and see how they compare. So there's that little demonstration of the Google advanced search. Um, and yeah, you've got that as a reference. So other things you can do when you post is you can do extra little, you know, bells and whistles. So you can see here on my posts, I start off with a title. I often use the word today, which encourages people to say, oh, this is current. I at mention people, I put in a link, I summarize things so that people can get value just by looking at the post without clicking a link. I mention anybody else, you know, hopefully there's a picture there. The carousel, which you can make on canva.com with lots of squares, um, they go well. There's tips here on how to make your posts go viral, how to search engine optimize your articles, which stay forever, and also how to create some scroll stopping uh, social media posts as well. I do recommend that you update your LinkedIn profile at least once a year. And as I said before, keep an eye on these stats. This is a screenshot from yesterday of what my stats were. Um, so I've definitely got more than 100 profile views and definitely more than 50 appearances in search results. Now, adding connections. If you're out and about in real life and you're at a party with your friends, uh, if you're on the train and you've got chatting to somebody, like I don't mind wherever you meet people, you can open the LinkedIn app and in the search box, you can press in the search box. Then you press the little dots on the right hand side and then you can press scan, which turns on the camera. And then the person, the other person can scan your QR code from your device. And once they scan it, there'll be these three buttons. It'll either be follow or connect, message and three dots. Now I recommend that you press the three dots and you choose personalized invite. Nice to meet you at the, it's last night, the council networking event. Let's connect Sue and send off the invitation. So from now on, everyone you meet in person, add them, your friends, uh, you know, everybody, and old colleagues you went to school with, previous workmates, like just connect. Because the more people you're connected to, the more likely you are to appear in their search result when they're looking for somebody with your expertise. Now, there's a, not a lot of point of doing any of this unless you've set some goals. Who do you want to reach, serve and support? And you might want to put in that little frame on your LinkedIn profile that says you're open to providing services, uh, that you're hiring, the little purple frame. I'm not a huge fan of the green open to work one. I think that looks a little bit desperate. But here you can see on my services page, I've popped in a little photo. Now, if you are part of an organisation, there will possibly be a social media policy that nobody has read. So go hunting, see if you can find it. Some organisations are fantastic at this kind of stuff, others not so great. But if you can provide content for the person doing the social media, let me tell you, they will be forever grateful. And if there's leads to be had, you'll get them. So be nice to the social media team and also have a strategy in place if you get some negative comments from disgruntled candidates. Um, at Westpac, we had a policy of not providing any feedback. It saved us from all sorts of legal issues. And, you know, if you say, all right, if you want some help, buy Sue's book. <laughs> that could be a good way to get out of it. And also... I block people who are a nuisance and I've, if I get triggered by something, I wait 24 hours before I respond. Um, but I usually respond to every comment. Uh, Jill says she's surprised by the number of organisations that don't have a social media policy. Yes, it's quite significant that don't. There's also a couple of links here on what to do before you quit your job because lots of people were getting a bit aggro last year and also what to do before you sack someone because... There's a lot of ways to do it that can actually make it very good for someone. So I've, I've published those as well. You can write articles. And up until very recently, they were all indexed in Google. But I can't see my recent articles being indexed in Google. But I will persist. And I also publish content on my website. But if you're thinking about paying for ads on LinkedIn, please read that article first. Because unless your audience is there, doing stuff, uh, it's not going to reach them. So you need to be sure of that first. 
Now, if you are in your own enterprise, and a few of you are, or even if you're not, the only thing that the enterprise owns is the website. But for the website to appear in search results, you need to have a social media presence. And I'm recommending that that be LinkedIn, Google My Business uh, as a minimum. All the rest are optional. You need to have online reviews, which is why I've invited you to write a review from today. You need to have listings and you can get listings on local directories quite often for free with a website link and they're high domain authority websites. So it's worth getting those links. And you might also have a link on a professional association website on a directory of recruiters, a membership listing, like all sorts of things. So make sure you have all of these and you link to them on your website so that your website ranks highly. And here's an article on how to be found in Google search results. If you want to be known as the top headhunter for banking professionals or whatever it is, um, you can definitely appear in search results. And I was actually working with a banking expert witness and he took up my suggestions and his Google rankings have skyrocketed. So definitely consider those options as well. Now, consistency is key with any digital presence. You can't do six things in February and nothing until June. I mean, it's not going to work. You're better off doing one thing a month for four months than six things now and nothing till June. So I recommend once a week to at least engage and um, make sure you abide by the LinkedIn user agreement. You are not allowed to use automation tools. You can systemize things. You cannot use a virtual assistant in another country either because LinkedIn detects that somebody else is logging into your account from another location and they can delete your account without warning. Also here in Australia, if you have a local library card, you can get free access to LinkedIn learning and acquire a few micro credentials and you can have up to 50 of those automatically added to your LinkedIn profile. So how can you do everything I recommend in 20 minutes a week? Well, you would log in and you would check out the news feed, particularly liking and commenting at length, if possible, on your clients and the people you want to support. Check out your notifications, decide whether you need to add anybody to your network, send out invitations to follow the company page, visit and engage with the content of your VIPs, connection, school, employer, enterprise. Again, the social media team will love it if you like their posts. Also, make sure you update anything that needs updating on your own profile. Put something in the news feed that you found and check out your stats, you know, maybe every three months and decide if there's anything else you'd like to do. Don't forget to say thank you. Like people appreciate it like more than you will ever know. So do that as well. And if you'd like to be kept up to date with what's happening on LinkedIn and the features you can use, feel free to subscribe to that newsletter because I put little updates in there. It's only once a month. So you've sat here for how many minutes? 42 minutes. And there's plenty of things that I have suggested you could do. So I encourage you to pick three. So one of them would be update your LinkedIn URL, update your headline and Put, click the notification bell on a few of your VIPs. Like that would be a really quick thing and you will get value out of this presentation. Your headline is the number one search box for queries. So uh, that is definitely something you should consider. Reply to posts. Beyond a like can feel precarious at time. What is a good length for a response to a post? Okay. The algorithm will promote a post if it has had lengthy comments. But if you just say, you are fabulous, Sue, and this is fantastic, and that's wonderful, and you're amazing, that doesn't really help anybody because it doesn't talk to the content that was in my post about resignation regret. But if you added something like, yes, I've met with a number of clients who've suffered from resignation regret, and what I found to be most helpful is X, A, B, and C, you know, that can be really helpful. Um, I'm fine even if people try and pinch clients off me out of it. I'm always polite. I'm always friendly. But it will help the post go more viral if you do put a lengthy post. Now, if there's nothing to add, like somebody's just shared a post, I would just say thank you for sharing the post. I mean, if they've just shared it, there's really nothing else to add. So it can be short. Um, but wherever possible, I will reference something that is in the post and respond directly to that. So what else is happening? 
Well, on Valentine's Day in New York at 3 p.m. or in Australia, Wednesday the 15th at 7 a.m., I'm going to be talking about LinkedIn and dating. Now, this is a, a tricky topic because everybody knows you shouldn't be using LinkedIn as a dating website. But LinkedIn is definitely a tool you could use if you are dating. To protect your identity, there's a few things you need to do. To check out whether your date's telling the truth uh, as a due diligence tool is also an option. And then I'm also going to talk about the, the LinkedIn user agreement and so on. So uh, looking really looking forward to running that with Kenneth Lang from New York on uh, Wednesday the 15th of February at 7 a.m. I'll just pop these links in the post in the chat again. So if you want to follow me uh, or register for any of those events, you can. Uh, my publications, presentations, video recordings, and the next webinar that's like this will be for social media marketing and digital strategy professionals because a lot of them are all over TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or some other platform, but they're not across LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn is the poor cousin in the social media world. And I want to inspire those social media marketing and digital strategy professionals to relook at LinkedIn because there's a lot of people who've left Twitter and I think LinkedIn is offers the best value out of all social media because it gives you Google search results, it builds your network, and it's a platform for acquiring new knowledge and relationships and business and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I love it. And if you'd like to hire me to tweak your own profile or page or get across you know, questions, uh, feel free to contact me for those. These are the other ones I'm running this year. I'm also looking forward to this one for military defense and emergency services professionals because they're very much underrepresented on LinkedIn and I'd love to see more of those on the platform and, and various others. And then you can see the ones that I've done since October 2021 via that link. You do not need to register. You can just click and watch and view and see the slides, download them, whatever you like, all for free. Uh, nobody will know that you did it. So enjoy. Again, my latest offers are available at suelson.com. Uh, these are all my webinars uh, via that link. Michael, thank you. Uh, these are the downloads that you can get. And also you can follow me on social media. That's that slide again. And don't forget, you can buy my book on Amazon. The link is in the chat as well. Uh, yes, oh, there's another, somebody's mentioned my name, but not a question. So feel free to write the rest of the question in the chat there. And if you'd like to write a Google review, you can use your phone to scan that QR code and it will pop up. And that is the QR code to follow the links if you don't wanna click on the links otherwise. Uh, Jill said, a fabulous session, jam-packed with really useful tips and resources to dip into. I'll expand my reading time this week to learn more. Thank you. Jill, the main thing is please do at least three things. Like I will just be so excited if you do three things. And if you've got your stats and you see them change, I get super excited when I hear that from people. I've also had another message, terrific, thank you very much. If you want to save the chat, you can click the three dots and choose save the chat. And that will make sure that you can see anything else here as well. Now I'm about to turn off the screen sharing and open it up to general discussion and happy to answer any questions live and in person. When I stop the screen sharing, your uh, representation on the internet may appear on the recording. So I just like to warn people about that if you want to turn off your camera or your name or something or another else. Um, so here we go. I'll turn off the screen share and get everybody up on my screen so that I can see you. Now, if you would like to ask a question, you can either raise your hand or you can unmute. Sharon, are you ready to fire something away there? I saw you pop up immediately. Lovely to see you online again. Thank you. I was had got into a meeting and then I realized it was past 12 o'clock, so I've only come in halfway. That's all right. All good. But, but, but look, as always, very helpful tips, and um, it's always good to, to you know, hear, hear all your latest advice. 
Thank you. And, and thank you for supporting so many of my posts when they come out. I really appreciate that. It, it really uh, reminds me why I do it. So uh, thank you for no, that. No, That's good. really no, helpful. I often talk about with my um, team here how good that, that course was that we did it through the um, AIM. I think it was yes. AIM. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. Thank you so much. Excellent. And it's boosted our... Um, our followers and our and my um you know reach on LinkedIn a whole lot since I've done that course with you. Excellent. Fantastic to hear. Well done. And and it only works if you do the work. So yeah, it's all well and good to turn up and listen, but if you don't take those action steps, yeah, you won't get the results. So yeah, well done, yeah. Sharon. Thank you. Thank Anybody else like to unmute or raise their hand? I'm happy to answer any other questions of anything related to LinkedIn or recruitment or careers or websites, I don't know, newcomers, happy to answer any of them. Looks like I've covered lots of information and you're all ready to jump back to the desk. Got lots of thank you messages here in the chat. So that's all lovely. Don't forget you can listen to the recording. I'll uh, just pop those links back in the chat again. If you missed them earlier. And let us see. Thank you. Lots of thank yous. Ah, Michael's already adjusted his uh, heading. Well done. I ah, like a person of action. That's fantastic. Really good stuff. Great content, yes, thank you. Good refresher on the power of LinkedIn. Oh, my goodness, LinkedIn is just amazing. Uh, what is the thing about changing the URL and the heading? And, yes, the recording will be available. So in the list of links that I've just put in the chat, um, the slides are now online. That's the link where the recording will be later today. Or if you just go to YouTube and my Sue Elson channel, you will see the recording. But I will quickly touch on this because it is a really important thing to be across. So the LinkedIn URL. So when you get a LinkedIn profile, you get a LinkedIn URL that appears up the top of your screen there. And it's normally your first name, dash, last name, and a whole bunch of numbers and letters. So what you can do is you go over here to edit public profile and URL, and you click the pen and you change it. Now, that's the gold standard. If that's not available, you can put a dash there or you can put a number on the end or you can put your post nominal. So I've got a Bachelor of Business. Um, I don't recommend a company name. Just leave it as your name. And whatever will work and you can save, that will search engine optimise your name and look way better on your business card, your email signature, your website, wherever else you publish it. So really important on your resume, you know, all of those locations, really important. And don't worry if you've got your old LinkedIn URL on your old resume, people can still click on that and it will still come through to this profile. Now, your headline. Your headline is directly underneath your name. And my LinkedIn headline formula involves a label, which I've decided to call myself an independent. So that's the adjective. LinkedIn is the area of expertise and specialist is my level of competency. So that's how I've decided to describe myself. And then I've put in a whole bunch of keywords that I want to be found for. So if somebody was looking for an author or a writer or a trainer or a LinkedIn trainer or a business trainer, you know, like any combination of these words uh, will help me. And then finally, I've put in the word dancer. Now, I'm not embarrassed to say that I am 57 years old. And it was really interesting because I did this little quick Google query last night and I typed in Sue Elson space and then the letter A, and apparently a lot of people are trying to find out how old I am because it was actually a search query that had been done before. Um, but when you're a 57-year-old white Anglo-Saxon female living in Australia, you're not always taken seriously. And particularly when you work in the area of social media, because I had a recruiter tell me that anybody over the 40-year age range would not be considered for a chief marketing officer position through his recruitment agency. And I was mortified because I 
have been attending between one and four events every week since I finished my university degree in the year 2000. Now, you tell me how many other social media people are spending that much time learning what they need to know. Like, it's not a lot. Anyway, the reason I put in that one of the things I like to do outside of work is dancing is because it shows that I'm active and I'm energetic and I've put in a little emoji right at the end because it adds a little bit of colour and flavour to my LinkedIn profile and it also um, shows that I know how to use tech. So, yeah, that's the reason for that in there. So that's my LinkedIn headline formula. Now, every LinkedIn trainer will give you a different reason. Oh, but you haven't talked about your value proposition. They can't find your phone number and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's their choice. But my goal is to get the profile views and the search appearances. So if I said, I help you make the most out of your experience on LinkedIn, like all those words are a waste because I won't appear in the search results. So the selling gets done in my about section where I give my post nominals, I give my contact details and my about section and my clients and my pricing and services. So that's where my selling is done down there. But I'm never going to get to selling if they don't see me in the first place. So that's my headline formula. Uh, why is this so useful again? <laughs> Oh, good on you, Michael. I'm happy to receive your uh, feedback. That's that's no worries at all. Uh, and another one from Sharon. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Fantastic session from Mary. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no. And Molly too. Thank you. Very informative. Look, I because I'm a learning junkie, because I've done so much education, Boy, do I hate it when people waffle and they don't tell you anything and then they make you say, but that's in my book and that's on my website and if you pay me, I'll tell you more. Like, I really hate it. Just tell me now. And then if I like it, I'll pay for it later. Uh, so, yeah, and I'm an educator at heart. If I've, if I've helped you today and you can say thank you, I'm kind of happy with that. So, uh, all good. And I've got to resist the urge to not check my messages now that I'm on the LinkedIn screen. Uh, so uh, thank you for that question. Hopefully uh, that answers it about the URL and the heading. Okay. Any other final questions? And no questions, silly, by the way. No others? Just unmute if you want to ask. All good. All right. Well, thank you again for your participation. I do like to wrap up with the hour and we've got three minutes to go. So I uh, hope you enjoy this if you're listening to the recording. Thank you for your participation. They say that 80% of success is turning up and you guys all turned up. So thank you for that. And I look forward to seeing you online or in the next webinar. Thank you, Philip. Nice to see you. Been a long time. Uh, between uh, catching up with you and uh, I really hope you have an awesome day wherever you are in the world oh there he is there you are. Thanks, <laughs> thank you and um, yeah thanks everyone and bye for now thanks Sue. I just bought the book oh well done yeah. thank you I hope you enjoy it did you get the paperback or the digital version I ordered it I've ordered the paperback that way I can draw all over it fold all over it have it with breakfast Yes, well, this is this is the, the proof copy and already I'm finding things in it that I want to update. So I'm, I'm hopeless. There, there'll be another edition. I mean, there's, there's small things like, oh, I could have added in why they should write read the book, you know, here. So there's a couple of little tweaks I'm going to I'm put in. I'm looking forward to reading it. You'll, you'll enjoy it because everything you will relate to. So the idea is, is as you turn a page with your computer next to you, you, you make the adjustment, turn the page. Yeah make the adjustment that that's the idea and i've learned so much today thank you you're most welcome my pleasure thanks a lot all right thank you yeah. bye everyone bye.